Okay, we're on, ladies and gentlemen. We got Charlie Perez with us today. Charlie Perez is a great Houston, Houston-based musician. We're happy to have him on. We've played so many times already with Charlie, getting to know Charlie both personally and musically. So it's been an adventure. And so thank you, Charlie, for coming with us thank and you. doing this. Yeah, so we can talk well, about Thanks for the invite. You got it, man. And um, we're glad we could do this over Zoom. You know, some people like to do it over Zoom. And it's awesome that there's no limitation to who mm -hmm. we can have on. So that's the thing to be grateful for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And Charlie, you can talk, we can start, I, I think, with just your life, and we can talk about your life, your professional career, your time in Houston, and then just branch out. Cool, man. Well, guys, thanks for having me, and, and this is exciting. I'm, 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 I'm going to try not to talk too much, but I'll, I'll you know, just, I'll, I'll give some, some good general details, but I mean, you know, I've, I've always been from Houston. This is this is where I'm from, born and raised. And um, I went to HSPBA. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where my artistic journey kind of really got really got you know uh, started. I was in the art department. I was really, I had, hadn't started really playing drums mm -hmm. or percussion until after high school. Um, but, but HSPBA was great, man. It was a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. I used to ride the bus there. I was on the metro like half my life just on the bus riding back and forth from you know during high school like listening to music you know on the metro and 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 sometimes you know not getting off my stop and having to like take an alternate route and just like getting to flip the you know the cassette tape a couple more times or like the, you know the cd play you know a couple more more times play some more music on my uh my Sony headset or whatever, <laughs> the Walkman. <laughs> um, but yeah, PVA and all just that artist community is kind of uh, where I've, I've 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 lived this whole time and lived uh, within the six ten loop and worked you know all over Houston for for twenty twenty years plus professional professional career over twenty years. Um, mostly as a, as a band leader i don't i don't think uh i've uh, really had a great career as a side man <laughs> nice. um it's just been one of those things I, I i really like to to call my own tunes i just really like you know a certain sound i wanted things to be a, you know if, if you know we're it's just, it, was, it was a personal thing especially you know jazz musicians we start playing jazz music then Know, I want to play the tunes that I've been working on, the tunes that I like, and so just you know wound up being a band leader, man, and it worked out that that way. That um, you know um, I got to kind of pick and choose the, the players that that um, you know either challenged me. You know, it was one of those things where I, it, if I felt you know nervous before the gig, and I was like, oh, okay, well I think I got the right cats on the gig. I'm probably gonna go there and like either suck or like. You know, learn or something <laughs> you know so it was one of those things and and uh but man houston's been it, it's been amazing um 20 plus years of of doing nothing but but gigging man playing drums and and it's been you know five days a week minimum like you know the, before covid i was i was i mean i'm I, I was knocking on my my conga drum over here knocking on wood um it's like I was doing like, you know, seven, eight gigs a week solid for like, you know, several years. You know, it's been, it's been great. Um, but the, the best part is just like drawing from all the, the, the diversity of Houston. Um, you know, the jazz was a, a, a cool thing that, that started kind of right out of high school with a couple of friends, a guitar player named Cole and a bass player named Jack. Some, 25 something years ago we did like a little like a you know a pat martino type you know real you know jazzy type a uh, 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 guitar trio type thing and um just kind of 
branched off. We did, we did a, I started a Monday night jam at the, at the, at the Avant Garden, Helios and Mausoleum, whatever, oh, wow. you know, it's got, yeah, several names, you know, I don't, I guess it was almost shit, 20 years ago. Dang. Maybe, maybe a little bit less, 15 years ago, we did the Monday night jam there and things kind of just flourished, flourished from there. A lot of, uh, mm. um, um, a lot of people came through there. Uh, 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 it was just like a, a you know, a, 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 what do you call it? A, a, a mixing ground. Everybody was just, you know, we had cats from from Cuba. We had Brazilians. We had, you know, all of, all of our amazing, you know, Houston jazz musicians and drummers that, that would go through there. Um, you know, you know, Chris Dave sat in, you know, Kendrick Scott sat in, we had Robert Glasper through there. Everybody's come through there, uh, that Monday night jam session. And so that was kind of like our, you know, early little claim to fame day, thing that we had, you know, it was a Monday night and we were charging five bucks at the door and cats in the band were still like almost making a hundred bucks, man. There's like five or six of us. And, and downstairs there was a medicine show, some other, you know, you know, cool, cool, like, uh, uh, was like rockabilly, not, not really rockabilly. It's like really home, home grown, like roots type of, uh, 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 bluegrass. You know, at, at first it started with the cat with the one of those tubs and, um, but there's all kinds of, you know, cool music going on on Monday night. It was like a Saturday, you know, completely packed all over. Um, and so that was, that was a cool experience. And that's, that kind of kicked things off for us. Um, and it kind of gave me the, in the experience, you know, to, you know, working with musicians and, and, and working with club owners and figuring out the, the, you know, the, the intricacies and, um, you know, trying to, trying to make money every, every, every chance, you know, every chance we got, um, and that's been a, a big, a big part of it, man. It was the financial thing, man. I've really. You know, I really needed to pay for all the the drums I was buying and stuff like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so for yeah, we needed to get, we needed to work. Um, Can I ask a diversion? But, yeah, man, it's it's been great. Can I ask a diversion question? Mm-hmm. This shot into my head just because we're talking about music and your music career, and I feel like I don't ask it enough. If you were to pick up your phone right now, let's say in the car, and put on some music, what would it be? It would probably be something that I'm trying to work on. Um, man, it, it, lately it's been a lot of uh, a lot of second line, really? a, lot of, a lot of New Orleans style music. Yeah, because I've got that, you know, the second line band. It's been a a labor of love, um, putting it together and keeping it together, and 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 learning music and 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 you know, sounding like a cohesive you know group. Um, especially throughout all you know these these times you know just trying to uh uh we we had a couple of practices you know rehearsals in the in in the in the park like in social distance rehearsals but you know just i'm trying to listen and getting that getting that really you know absorb that style of music Mm. so you know i don't have too much of a uh you know a an accent when i play it you know so Uh (laughs) you know i when i try to play that stuff you know i want to sound like you know cat from you know from Orleans. Yeah, so so that's yeah. the that's the that's the thing so i've listened to a lot of that stuff and trying to learn it um it has it's been a long time since i can do just like some serious listening for fun um but but you know the this that's 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 the thing like you know being the band leader is you know i'm picking tunes that i really like so you know i'm, I'm enjoying the, the stuff that i'm listening to and 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 actually i'm you know, working on it at the same time, you know, trying to absorb it, learn it by osmosis. I'll be in the car just casually, like, you know, with the drumsticks and hitting, hitting the, uh, the red lights is, is, is all good. Cause you know, I can, you know, probably shed a little bit longer here, this extra minute, you know, <laughs> That's awesome. just in the car. Yeah, man. But yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a little bit of a, you know, sanctuary cause you know, uh, um, but it's, you know, it's like it's kind of turned into a little mini you know, mobile office, you know, just getting there and listen to some music and get ready for the gig on my way to the gig. <laughs> right. So what are some specific uh, second line people you're listening to? 
or groups, whatever. Uh, the hot, hot. What was it? Uh, uh, um, sorry, the uh, uh, Dirty Dozen Brass Band. There's, there's one. Uh, um, uh, eight. What am I? I'm tripping. It'll come to me right, right when this is over. But is this a hot eight? Is it the I, name of it or something? But I think, th- I think I've um, actually heard of them. It was a hot club. Yeah, there's the rebirth, you know, rebirth yeah. and Treme and all, you know, just yeah. a lot of the traditional stuff. Um, the, I used to go to the the, the, the downtown library and, and and take my laptop and just like just go through all their 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 CDs and just download them onto my computer. And so mm. a lot of the stuff I've just got like you know. Old, really just old school recordings of, of, of rebirth we actually when I 20 years ago I, I, I was playing with a, a band called the free radicals and uh, we opened up for rebirth at Fitzgerald's mm. and that's kind of where like the my my love for that stuff started man it was just so you know jazzy and raw and like you know it was just it's too hip right so I, and, and but I wanted to buy a CD, and even though I was in the the opening band, they still charged me twenty five dollars for the CD. I was like, "Damn, that's cool!" But man, I'm mm. I'm, I'm still gonna be a fan. <laughs> that's <laughs> cool. But so that type of thing, you know, just stuff that I, you know, we're just trying to emulate that vibe, that that you know, New Orleans thing, and um, so it's, you know, a lot a lot of Nor- not a lot of second line stuff I've been listening to lately. Hmm. Um, how about y'all? What are y'all listening to lately? Oh my goodness, dude! You know what that's I put a, on that's, yesterday? That's a crazy question, cause like I've been listening to everything lately, but like, okay. like I'll be so. Let me hmm. see, let me throw this out there. It's like hmm. musicians that you know. Obviously, you know, I'm a drummer, so I, I tend to like pick you know drummers that I like. You know, and, and, and instead of you know like my favorite piano player, or like you know a sax player, so I'm looking for the drummer. Are you guys doing the same thing? Are you looking for the instrument that you that you perform um, to kind of highlight the music that's, that that uh, 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 you know you choose to listen to? Mm, half and half, or it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's just whatever bit. feels good. I, I would say ha- <clears throat> half and half, depending. <clears throat> like for example, yeah. we've been trying to um, write a tune. So in the process of trying to write this very specific tune, we're listening to like, kind of like this, a lot of urban music, like some Moonchild or, or even going back to some old James Brown. Yeah. Um, or even I would say, or a lot of pure like seventies disco. Mm-hmm. Or, cool. I'm not saying that this influenced what we're writing, but in some sense it may have. Mm, I yeah. actually feel like it may have. Yeah. Is me personally, but then with Armin also some Led Zeppelin. Mm. And like, uh, if you go I didn't really go back to Led Zeppelin until like mm. I don't know, maybe two months ago or something like that. And I was like, dang, I forgot how good this was. They're so Yeah, good. you there's a reason why it, it had you for so long, and you know, that stuff that you yeah. were just drawing, mm-hmm. you know, just stuck you, man. It's or like, another one that we just went back or I kind of just went back to, um, and we've been talking about is Rage Against the Machine. Oh man. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right on, right on. Yeah. Um so it it's pretty eclectic, you know. Just to be broad. I just yeah. want to be, you know trying to be broader and i think that was like the impetus for i was like let me go back to led zeppelin for example yeah get a taste i mean i've had i've had obsessive periods of very guitaristic driven listening guitaristic transcribing gets i mean everything just having to do with with the guitar Mm -hmm. and you know i've been holding off holding off like the deep writing process like every every year and and now i i want to get more into the writing so i'm trying to absorb a lot of material if that makes sense yeah that's great that's the best way to do it i think yeah. man and, and also just you know write a write you know a bunch of tunes man mm-hmm. right a lot of crappy ones mm-hmm. this is kind of what you know you know just like you're doing listen listen to a lot of you know b-side funk man a lot of stuff that you know you just might have a it's just it just might click with some you know some some idea that you have and and you know something you know it's just it's just great mm-hmm. i mean that's how we that's how we come up with stuff man i mean mm-hmm. it's, 
it's by by getting influenced and inspired by it. Even, um, but yeah, man, that's that's cool. That the, the was it like kind of neo soul mm, funk mm -hmm. type of thing y'all are doing, y'all are working on. Mm -hmm. I, I heard it. Yeah, I heard some of that stuff. Who uh, I think y'all did it right there in the studio, right? Mm -hmm. The YouTube that was video. Chad's uh, composition, "Funk Me Out." Okay. Which you played. Right we played it at Mercantile. Yeah. Okay, but that's man. Yeah. <laughs> I've been having a lot of fun at Mercantile. Thanks Dude, for that. Dude, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is, is also like, you know how to play a room like that? Yes. And it's like, yeah. man, not a lot of people know about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, it's a hard room. It's, yeah, it's yeah, tough. Yeah, but yeah. the rim shots can, can make your, make everybody's yeah. ears ring. Man, yeah. and that picture yeah. that you took, uh, last week that you posted from your drum kit that was a crazy picture i was like dang yeah but I got that big like pan around almost like a yeah like a fish eye with the lights and uh yeah, yeah man it's a cool spot i like I, that's a great spot everybody's they're you know listening yeah and the owner and him. really likes jazz and uh he loves it and i know that he cool. wants to get uh like carpets and some sound dampening stuff and i was like okay sweet so i guess i gotta be like <laughs> on him about that they just need some more art on the walls uh, yeah, right. or, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's cool yeah it's a great spot man keep that going good for y'all that's about us it's very fun i got i got a good question for you this is kind of like a right. a good podcast and a podcast highlight topic can you tell us, because I love the band, about your work slash relationship with Krongbin? Did I say it right? The cats. Yeah, my boys. Yes. My, my. So it's been a great ride. And, and, and I, you know, I love the band, too. And if I wasn't working with them, I'd still listen to them, man. To be honest with you, it's, nice. it's just cool stuff. It really sing, it really it just speaks to my my myself you know like just how i am i'm you know i'm a little i'm, I'm just, you know low-key and, and that's kind of the, the vibe it's, it, it has you know very mm -hmm. meditative kind of ambient vibe um that music was great but man just the 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 relationship with mark is is has is, been going on for a long time we me my wife and mark uh shared a, a warehouse 20 plus years ago downtown on rusk street and uh, I think we were there a few years, probably three, maybe four years. And um, man, it was great. We kind of built out or, or fixed up this little office. It was some kind of, you know, industrial warehouse. Maybe it was just we packing and shipping and delivering or something. But it had a little office in there with some, you know, real basic plumbing. And, uh, you know, we, we just like, there was no, you know, YouTube or anything back then. We just kind of really probably went to the library and you know copped a few books and you know just looked at some pictures and followed some diagrams and built out a couple of rooms wow. on either side of the office and he had his room and me and my girl had our room we cut through the corrugated steel uh walls built little frames and put little you know already built windows and like threw ourselves some windows in the little <laughs> in the warehouse and um, man, we just kind of just set up shop and, and, and kind of just started cultivating the, you know, the, the, that, that culture, uh, that kind of that school of musicians and, and, and stuff from that, from that era. Cause a lot of cool stuff happened in that, in that warehouse, man. And, uh, what? so for example, like bands like Los Carnales were practicing there, um, a, a salsa band that I that I'd worked with for a really long time, like Houston's biggest salsa band, uh, called uh, uh, called Orquesta San Merun, big big salsa band. We were rehearsing there. Uh, Mark was rehearsing there with his cool, you know, uh, uh, reggae kind of funky band called Sound Patrol, and I kind of played keyboards a few times with them. Um, they needed keyboards here and there. And so when I wasn't working, 
they trained me. He's like, he was just cleaning up like six chords. And so we did a few few gigs with his band, Sound Patrol. Um, but you know, it just kind of started from there. Uh, um, Twenty plus years ago on Rusk Street downtown. Um, and then we we kind of went our, our our own ways, and and you know, we just kept at it. He was, he did a lot of great things, and he was working with with Beyonce and Music World, and helped put together his all her all girl band, and you know, just tons of you know badass shit you know, he's he's a, he's a, a, a you know amazing artist and musician and uh so you know, whatever he you know whatever he's doing is is good stuff so he you know he's doing his own thing and and i was doing my own thing and and um several years later he found me at a at a, at a gig downtown and it's like man i've been looking for you he doesn't really do social media i, I wasn't really doing social media i was real late to the whole thing and uh so we can't we, you know we just really it's not like we were just casually following each other on Facebook or anything. So he, you know, he kind of tracked me down after seeing, you know, yeah, I was playing there at a, at what, what was it? A market, markets, marketplace downtown mm -hmm. in Phoenicia, mm -hmm. Market oh, yeah. Bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's like, dude, it's just like, man, you know, I need some percussion, need some help on this thing that I'm doing, man. It's like, yeah, I know. I've, you know, I've heard about uh, your band. It's badass. And it's like, I've heard the um, percussion you're doing. It's like, it's really good you know what i taught you so far was cool but yeah man i'll help you out <laughs> and uh it it's been a it's been an awesome ride man since like uh 2017 we started working on um the percussion for uh, con todo el mundo mm. great like it's just a beautiful album um and so we split duty like there's a lot of percussion that mark does man a lot of really cool key stuff that you know, I'm just, I'm kind of playing off of and, 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 and I take a lot of direction from him. He's, you know, he's, he's running the, the session when I'm there and, and he's kind of giving me the idea, you know, this is kind of what I want. This is what I, what I'm looking for, you know, let's play through a couple of times and, and, and he'll pick what he likes. And so, um, man, it's been, it's, it's, it's been great. We're, we're hoping to, to, to start, gigging like we want this to to you know hurry up and and, and come to an end that way you know this, the 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 gigs can can reappear the big gatherings the big concerts can can start again um but uh uh we got a lot of you know a lot of cool music that 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 i think uh, uh um you know we're going to be sharing pretty soon as soon as it opens up I, uh, the music after Con Todo El Mundo started having a lot more percussion on it, so I'm 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 you know, crossing my fingers that you know there's just the more percussion that's on the music, you know, the more they're gonna need me at their live shows. <laughs> so as soon as things open up again, uh, you know, I hope we'll be doing some gigging and traveling safely. Um, but man, it's been a, it's been a great ride. They're an amazing band, and um, you know we did that that work with uh, Leon Bridges that came out this this. Uh, February, past February in, in, in 2020, um, that was that was a highlight, and, and it was real exciting to learn that uh, the Obamas had been listening mm. uh, this summer to Krungvin and uh, wow. Leon Bridges because it turns out that yeah, he it was Texas Sun. The EP was uh, uh, number one on his uh, summer playlist. So, you know, there's been some highlights throughout the pandemic. Wow, you know heard that news so it was, it was fun we kind of rode that way for a little bit <laughs> that's but man it's been a great ride the music's amazing and um awesome. you know it's just I, I can't wait for more how do they get that how do they so does barack or did barack actually have a spotify or something and pick that yeah i think so Charlie, where did you go? Nice. <laughs> oh, here I am. Sorry about that. I, yeah, I, that was uh, someone has calling me. Sorry okay. about that. No problem. Um, what should I do to, to, to prevent that? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> if it happens, it, okay. it'll happen. Um, All right. Well, I'm not usually not that popular during the pandemic, but uh -huh. that was Tim Ruiz that just called me, by the way. You guys know uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We we should we gotta try to do a thing. We could at least do a Zoom. I'm thinking, yeah, with Tim, you know. 
Yeah, man. Shout yeah. Out to him. yeah. Um, he's, 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 he's been on our list for a while. We see you, Tim. We know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> um, shouts out to Tim Reeves. Um, what the heck were no, we talking about? I was saying, <laughs> how did that actually work? Like, Barack Obama put this list together because I've I've seen it before, but that is so sweet. I didn't know Krungbin was on it. Yeah, man. So he he does like he just posts playlists that you know music that he's rocking i guess or that's sweet um sweet. periodically he's just like posted on social media this is you know and i think it started you know, several several years ago i mean even maybe <clears throat> right out of his yeah last you know last year i know he liked esperanza spalding a lot he likes esperanza spalding i did oh I yeah did yeah she was at the white house. house oh yeah mm-hmm. who doesn't she's mm-hmm. she's amazing man awesome oh, that 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 was that was another that was something that I listened to for a long time over mm-hmm. and over again. Mm-hmm. Was, and that um, what was it? It was, it was just self self titled Esperanza. Oh yeah, you know totally. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was one. And then you got that Radio Music Society, mm. and that mm-hmm. was nasty. Mm-hmm. And then it was yeah. I mean, we I, I went to see her. I went to see that. Same. They had like the bandstand, like a you know wherever the band was sitting, and yeah. it was like a boombox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was super cool. It was cool. It was cool. Yeah, it was cool. It just you know, but yeah, that's the thing about getting just fixed on this you know this, this this moment in time. It's like this is you know what you think of this person or this artist, and that's like you know yeah. It's not like Sade. It's like someone like Sade. Like Sade, it's just like you know, I love. And, and I don't want to jinx anything. Yeah. But, we love Shade. God, she's a goddess. <laughs> we but, love we. But she's like you know that's that's that vibe, right? She's yeah. like that's just that's what it's gonna sound like. You know that that's how it's gonna feel. You know when you when you listen to her music. Mm. Uh, I know. Uh, I already know. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, man. She changed anyways, a lot with the with the latest. It changes, right, right, right. You just yeah. get used to it. People change and they want to start playing different music, and, mm-hmm. and she, that was hard to get used to the like really uh, recent stuff. I feel like I was so in love with the early Esperanza and then she put out like yeah, yeah. the Good Lava. Maybe, I don't know if that's a song or if that's the album name, but whatever Good Lava is affiliated with. Uh, it's cool. Like it's its own yeah. thing, but I'm so attached to the original that it was hard for me to, exactly. to follow that. Right, right, right. She had, you know, this like the real world music, jazzy vibe, like it kind of, you know, it, it it was super sophisticated to me, but it was you know it had like some some cool samba, mm-hmm. you know, and some some cool six eight, and, uh, you know, some. It was a great album. I, don't, I you know I wish we just like followed it up with that one, <laughs> and like did you know an answer to that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, man. I mean, you know, just just speaking of that, like you know, same thing with 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 K Ben, man, Krung Ben, they they've changed a lot you know there's a lot of vocals on this album and and and, and this last album mordecai um which is more of like a world beat world funk uh, uh disco world disco type vibe hmm. and uh it, it's 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 a lot different from you know their first releases you know the the, the universe about smile upon thee or whatever <laughs> smile upon us and uh con todo el mundo it's 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 a lot different but you know the artist wants to change and just they want to play what they want to play and then you know the, the hardcore fans will, will love it no matter what mm-hmm. all right oh um, i guess and so I, I i really love esperanza but i hadn't bought really anything since so i don't know that, that logic didn't work there with me <laughs> i feel that right. i got a question yeah. for you if yeah besides yourself if you could play with, or besides like any group that you just like put together that you want but if you could be asked to play with some modern artist right now who would you absolutely love to be called by cool yeah there's a, a lot of different genres because I'm, I'm i'm crazy about all you know world music and brazilian music and cuban music and yeah so there's there's a there's a there's a couple um Man, I would love to get called by hi- hiatus 
you know, coyote oh. man. Like you know, they need they need some percussion in that. Uh, in that. Uh-huh. Yeah. That that would be that They're would be uh, uh, today. Mm. Yeah, man. Nasty. Yeah. So so for sure for sure you know that that type of vibe would be really cool. Um, there's a there's like some you know I, I like a lot of Brazilian music, man. I love if if you know I would love it if some some old school you know brazilian you know artists would call me you know it'd be, yeah. it'd be great to do some some something that's out of my it's just fun man it's just for like a you know like a like a like you know on 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 vacation and somewhere else and speaking a different language just like just outer body experience you know and just like living someone else's life you know playing this music you know from a different country it's a cool experience, man, and, and and so something like that would be cool. Uh, I, I really love Myra Andraji. You should check her out. M A Y R A Andraji, uh, A N D R A D E. She's a, a Portuguese Brazilian singer mm-hmm. who's got really cool uh, configurations of jazzy bands, but she plays, you know, really folky, jazzy style, you know bosses mixed with 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 whatever contemporary folk stuff's coming out of portugal and brazil right now so that type of thing i really lo- i really love that type of stuff you know um that's cool let's see who else um man yeah something like that yeah uh, myra andraji she called her hiatus coyote would be great that's cool um yeah <laughs> i'll check out the maya and- why yeah. Why are Houston musicians the best? <laughs> man, it's it's a good it's a good question, man. And and good question. Yeah. You know, mm. I don't know. I don't know. There's something in the water. Mm. There's something in the water here in Houston. Um yeah. I mean we Literally. just we just got I think there's just a lot of inspiration. Uh, uh, places we can draw inspiration from, and and there's, there's such a diverse and, and 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 I mean just kind of a large crowd of musicians that I mean you've got you, uh, musicians from all walks of life, um, and and you know love it or hate it like you like either you're trying to either and there's so many different scenes in Houston that that you know you 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 you're you know, moving from one scene to another, trying to grow from one. There's just a lot of growth, a lot of action, a lot of stuff happening in Houston. There's such a, a buzz in Houston that, you know, you just kind of, uh, uh, you tend to just have a, a habit of, of shedding and trying to, you know, mm-hmm. I don't want to say, you know, competition, you know, that's for horse races for horses, but, you know, casually, you know, we need gigs. And so I feel like there's, there's a, there's a good, healthy, uh, 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 competitive vibe in Houston. You know, people, take their their trade uh, i feel seriously here i feel there's a good respect for the for for you know for the culture and so uh, it just reflects man in, in musicianship i mean there, there's there's probably it's it's like one of those graphs that you see on social media like it'll show you like a, the planet or the it's just like a like a round pie graph of like the you know it's the universe and it'll show you like a little slither it's like said this is what you know this is what you don't know you don't know and then the rest <laughs> of it is like this is what you don't know you don't know or whatever you know right yeah. so it's like there's such a, there's a a large music scene in Houston that there's so, there's so, there's stuff going on people you know who should be on your podcast who've been do, you know that have been doing this for a long time that we don't even we don't even know different mm-hmm. scenes like yeah, the totally. Zydeco scene there's a Nigerian scene there's you yeah. know merengue scene and the salsa scene and the bachata scene and you know cats doing their Brazilian music man I love if if you know I would love it if some some old school you know Brazilian you know artists would call me you know it'd be, be great to do some some something that's out of my it's just fun man it's just for like a you know like a like a like you know on 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 vacation and somewhere else and speaking a different language just like just outer body experience you know and just like living someone else's life you know playing this music you know from a different country it's a cool experience man and and, and so something like that would be cool uh, I, I really love myra andraji you should check her out m a 
Y R A Andrade, uh, A N D R A D E. She's a, a Portuguese Brazilian singer who's got really cool uh, configurations of jazzy bands, but she plays, you know, really folky, jazzy style, you know, bosses mixed with, with, with whatever contemporary folk stuff's coming out of Portugal and Brazil right now. Okay, now we're actually back. <laughs> we had a technical issue, but we're back. We were talking about why Houston musicians are the best, and Charlie was explaining that we're cosmopolitan in the city. We've got a lot of scenes. We've got a lot of inspiration to draw from, and we're competitive, but also we're not like – we we've got a like a happy spirit there's a happy spirit in the city and the competitiveness mm -hmm. is not it's not like LA like i don't think when i think competitiveness i don't think like a city like LA where it's almost just comedic how competitive and how fake That's it can nice. it can <laughs> it can get so but now right before we uh, hit the record button again we were talking about how cafeza which is a which is a cool, really cool spot in town, was shut down for a while. Now they're back. Charlie, tell us about that. Man, we're so happy they're back. We're doing our Monday night thing uh, again. And, uh, you know, pre-COVID, it was just a blowout every time, man. Just It was mm -hmm. so much fun. We, you know, there, there's four of us in the band. It's a tiny place already, so that four already took up, you know, a, almost you know <laughs> a quarter of the of the of the floor space mm -hmm. in the shotgun you know you know it's, it feels like new york it feels you know mm -hmm. it's got that vibe a little you know mm -hmm. uh, um, old building and right there on the corner anyway man it was great great and and obviously we had to shut down the whole you know country shut down and we're finally back but we've got some you know we've got some different uh, 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 things going on over there. It's not. It's not the the open jam like it quite. You know, like it was it, where everybody can just show up and play. And 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 uh, now it's it's an invite only type thing. So before the night even happens, we've kind of got to arrange. You know, who's going to be sitting in. So it's almost like we have some featured artists. We should have you guys up there sometime, man. That'd be. Sick. I'm scared, it's man. A, Anthony. Yeah. Anthony usually plays bass, right? That's the cat. Yeah, man, that's the man. Yeah. I heard him the other week. Uh, shout out to Anthony McKinney. What a freaking awesome bass player! Because I don't really know him, and but oh, I heard him the other week, and I was like, oh, so yeah, he's, awesome! He's, it's great, man. Yeah, I've got I've got tons of video where I'm like I'll, I'll take a video of myself just to you know see how I'm how bad I sound and what I need to fix and. And I wind up just listening to him. And like, yeah. I was like, man, that sounds great. I want to send it to him. They're like, ah, oh, no, nah, he's already got, you know, I mean, he's got enough going on. And, you know, <laughs> and who, um, oh, but, for yeah. people who are listening, great who's usually in the band at Cafes uh, on Monday nights? Well, the the original, uh, it's changed, but but lately it, it, it's Ron Hell Moral from Venezuela. And uh, we've got, John Calderon on guitar mm -hmm. from, from Houston, Texas, myself and Anthony McKinney, um, also from Houston. But um, before, I mean, it started off with Lois and with Tito and, and it's had, you know, some a couple of different players throughout, throughout the years. Um, I, you know, I think I'm pretty happy with, uh, with, um, with the team right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're enjoying being back. And, and like I said, it's kind of an invite thing. Uh, people are, are, are paying to get in. They're, they're buying tables. They're, they're coming in groups. They're, you know, paying good money to come check out the, the show. So it's kind of like a concert now. Um, it's, it's a lot less casual. Um, I used to joke around a lot when I would post uh, uh, for, for the gig. I'd say, you know, casually starting around eight because, you know, we'd get there and, you know, things would, you know, whatever, you know, 815 would probably be a good, you know, <laughs> if, eight, if we had to, if we had to fair point. Right? Yeah, so, you know, but now, you know, it's a concert. People are paying to get there, you know, to get in. And, and so, you know, everything is 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 running smooth and, and uh, uh, it's a different vibe in there. But, man, we're, it, we're just glad to be playing again in that space and with each other. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're there tonight. Come, come hang out. 
Every Monday night, mm-hmm. eight yeah, to Monday night. eleven. Eight to eleven, and that just mm-hmm. uh, that kind of speaks to uh, the 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 question, the previous question, and the, you know, point and topic of, of what makes Houston musicians, I guess, special or uh, you know, the best, more attractive out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the best, the best. Let's just say it, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> But even like we're is, is that like there's the camaraderie, man. You know, we have yeah. some really world class guys coming on stage and and that that come through there to to play and just to to share and there's just it's a great vibe and and you know there's people from all over the world, you know, um, and and it's just it's a it's a great micro uh, microcosm of, of of what you know the world should be, you know. Uh, so anyway, it's our it's it's our little paradise, and we're glad it's 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 up and rolling. And while it's a double edged sword, another reason why it's great for us specifically as musicians to be in Houston is because we actually have opportunity to play right now, unlike other cities such as New York or L.A. or whatnot. Because, I mean, as I just said, double edged sword. Um, you know, they're more restricted and more closed down and, you know, sometimes it's good to keep things under wraps, but at the same time, it's really hard for people like us who, you know, we're essentially all self-employed, all commission based salary. And we really have to work every day to maintain that. Exactly. Exactly. And, um, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it, it might be happening. I mean, there's rumors, that, yeah. um, you know, as the, as the, as the trend is speaking again and more than ever, I mean, it's probably safe to bet that we'll be shutting down here pretty soon. <laughs> Charlie. Anyway, you know, Charlie. So, Char- yes, sir. You, you know what, man? Um, we, when we do have this other lockdown, I know, see, this is another thing. See, there's there's musicians in this town. The other thing is that Houston and its and its musicians, we actually we all want to work. Houston wants to work. Texas wants to work. And you know, like even during the lockdowns, players like you, who not only are great players, but also we think about we we we're great planners. I think we're we're we we think about the social aspects of music. We think about the business aspects of music, and so uh, I invite Houston musicians to do whatever they can, even if there's another lockdown, to prepare for the future, prepare for a strong comeback. I figure Cafeza. It makes a lot of sense to me that they're charging now, because you got to make back that money you just lost over mm-hmm. the months, don't you? Uh, uh, that's part sure. of it that's part of it right so like that but see like th- i'm very proud of Cafeza for making that move i think that's a great move and like we should all be making these moves because i don't want this lockdown to mess us up any more than it ha- uh, than the others already have yeah. so yeah i like what you guys are doing the uh, um the, the the thing out in the park, man, you know, the Manil, right? You yeah. Doing some some yeah. stuff out in the park, and and I think you know that's going to be another. That's uh, it's kind of opened up, and we've done, you know, I've done a couple of things, you know, uh, out in in public, kind of private gatherings where a neighborhood would just kind of commission us, basically, and we'll just go play on a corner, and and you know the neighbors had all pitched in and, and paid the band, you know, kind of what we would have made in a club. Mm-hmm. And, and so, and I, and I, and I think that's kind of what's happening in the community over there at the Manil, right? Yep. Yeah. There's something kind of like that going on. And I think that's hit, man. And I think that's, you know, something I, I haven't tapped into that, that I, I think is, because, you know, I've got three boys, man, that need to, they need to, you know, they need, they need to run those little legs, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it'd be nice if I could get them out in the big open field and, and, and then they can check out some music mm-hmm. while we're out there. And, and you know, we got to um, owe. But a lot of families who are, who are hunkering down, man, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's tough and it's tough for us. You know, we can't, you know, socialize, but it'd be nice if mm-hmm. we can safely as a family go enjoy some, you know, some music and, and, you know, see people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't mean to be in, 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 a, in a safe, you know, public setting you know to listen to some music but anyway i want to i want to tap into that so i might i might uh, uh and we can ask you you know we can you know, have drums too we we had drums one time with uh 
Keith Carnegie actually came out and brought his drum set to the Menil. It was dope. Way, oh. I mean, that was early on. That was deep, oh, yeah. deep quarantine, but that was really yeah, fun. That was April. And, you know, we got to owe it to Corey Wilson for uh, setting that stage because he was the one originally going out there by himself to the Menil Drawing Institute and just playing mm -hmm. solo sax. And he was like, guys, people are here. They're sitting out in the field. They like the music. We should make it a thing. And then, you know, we started doing it, especially during the lockdown, almost every day. And we essentially, everybody who lives in the neighborhood just started to gather there in the evening because they knew music was going to occur. Mm -hmm. And every time that we did it, everybody came up to us and they're like, man, this is exactly what we needed. We're so thankful. Yeah, music, sure. And we got the sunlight. Eighth Wonder gig that way. You know, it's mm, crazy. Yeah. We, it, the Sean from Eighth Wonder, his son was there. Mm, mm -hmm. And uh, he saw us, and then he got our number, and there you go. Even I heard a story today from my girlfriend, and she was talking to uh, some TAs, some student TAs at Rice, and she was talking about music and musicians. And she mentioned me how I was a musician here in Houston and that we play at the menu and he's like oh my gosh i remember one day i was taking a walk and i was having a bad day and then i heard some music at the menu park and then i saw these musicians and it was some awesome jazz and i went back home got a book got a chair came right back out and my whole bad day was changed into a good day so uh. there it is you know an example uh -huh. of that so you know it doesn't that's part of what we were saying I think we've said it many times, but music is the universal unifier and mm. it's a universal medicine for the soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, dude, we're literally, um, musicians are literally like soldiers of God, dude. Like Soldiers of God. That's, that's <laughs> not for real. No, no, for, no, for there no. you go. Man, yeah. that's... I, I don't know if we we're gonna be able to top that. Uh -huh. uh, I think that thing. <laughs> that's yeah. it, man. I think that's a perfect. Man, we've got a lot yeah. of we've got a lot of good work to do, then, man. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying. I'm trying I to get in on some of that. Yeah. I want to do. I want to get out there and do it, and and you know, obviously, um, um, you know, it, it's it's. It's, it'll just be a good place to to to, to fellowship, man. And, yes. you know, with, with, and it's out, like I said, it's outside and during the pandemic, people are needing it. We need it, and if we can, you know, make some 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 bread doing it, man. I think I think you mm -hmm. know some of this is this has become lucrative. You know, putting your Venmo account out there and you know whatever. You know, I, I've been getting a lot of tips. At, at my gigs via you know venmo and cash app yeah. which is something new man like you know yeah. we're, we're making money at our gigs but um you know some you know people are going uh, uh, uh over and beyond um at one saturday night with my cuban band there was a, a young group of people who came up and wanted to tip us but didn't have any cash so they took my my zelle information or something and so they tried to send it that night and it didn't go through for some reason or whatever, it didn't go through. And I kind of, it just, you know, didn't, I wasn't going to pursue it because she was just nice enough to, you know, the gesture. So I wasn't going to, I just felt to be tacky to follow up mm. casually, you know? <laughs> so anyway, man, I just, several days went by. And uh, um, I think by the end of the week, she had noticed that it, it didn't go through and she resent it. Mm. Right. And so it was just like, just getting, you know, really, you know, feeling the love. So like, you know, yeah. God's, you know, we're doing, if we're doing God's work, then we, you know, it feels like we get, that's, you know, blessings, it. you know, so that's, that's a, God's love. That's been, that's been good. That's it. But yeah, man, I'm, 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 I'm positive. No, no matter what, you know, the pandemic or, you know, we shut down again. I'm, I mean, you know, I ain't worried about hopefully we get to some, yeah, I'm not going to worry too much about it. We just keep doing what we, you know, yeah. we do uh, like, I would hit the manil every you know every night and and uh, maybe Uber some food on the way there or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. No, yeah. I mean, I'm just trying. I, I think it's beautiful. I like how we're pumping each other up. I just got us down this tangent because I wanted to pump us up, 
and just keep us positive because uh, it's better to be like that and to be like, oh my God, a new lockdown's coming. Not again. Like, what are we going to yeah, do? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think this well, is a good place to tidy things up. Uh, we already had roughly an hour. What did we have? We had like, four, you know, 40, 40 minutes, minutes of 40 discussion. Minutes prior to this and and you know charlie you're, you're a busy dad you're a busy musician so we're gonna let you do your thing thank you for coming again like thank i'd you. like to do another one you know i'd yeah. like to do many more yeah. I, I don't as many yeah. as we want and yeah and then eventually do do a live one over here you know what i'm saying get some with, that sounds good. with yeah. a little live music yeah, we, performance we, yeah we'll do the next one there mm -hmm. all right charlie yeah. Thanks again, man. Right, we'll see you soon. Well, I'll see you in the real world, hopefully soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll <laughs> see you very soon. Hi, Charlie. All, All right. right. Thanks, man. Peace Appreciate out. it. Peace. Yeah. Um, man, let me think here. Well, Houston Ensemble number 12, Charlie Perez, Houston Ensemble number 12. That tidies up things. If you're loving our content, we're trying to keep Houston alive. We're trying to get all the best Houston musicians, best Houston scholars up in here. Scholars. So do what you can to support us. You can simply subscribe. Takes approximately two milliseconds to subscribe. You can also donate to us via our website, HoustonEnsemble.com. You can go to the top right corner of the page and click the boxed donate button. You can also go to any of our socials at Houston Ensemble, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at Houston Ensemble, and follow us there. Chad, what else can I do? You know, we got a lot of other stuff uh, going on right now, whether it's at the gigs, Axel Rad, Eighth Wonder, Mercantile Coffee Shop. You can come out to those, see when we're playing. Um, the schedules are posted on the social media, but... Also, you know, we recently developed a partnership with Sinful Bakery, uh, an amazing vegan bakery here in Houston. And Dylan, the owner, is really contributing to our homeless outreach where the Houston Ensemble and any amount of volunteers that we get come together, prepare a bunch of food, and deliver it to the homeless. So, you know, anything that you guys give support-wise is going towards stuff like that. So, uh we appreciate all the support that we've already gotten. Houston's really loving it. And our, uh, actually, a development as of today, an article came out in the Houston Chronicle written by Lawrence Knox, and it's documenting the homeless outreach. It's already out? It's out. on. It's out online as of today. Mm -hmm. It'll be in print by Friday. So uh, check out the article, Houston Ensemble, on the Houston Chronicle. But uh, with that, you know, we'll see you for episode 13. We got amazing guests coming up. That'll do it. Sweet. And we'll catch you guys next episode. See ya. Three, two, one.